Welcome, everyone. We got another amazing special. I, I got too many good words to say for this man, Jamie Staples, aka Poker Staples. We got a we got a big pod on Coin Rivet. This is number twelve. Jamie, how are you? Doing great, Jeff. Thanks for having me on, man. Uh, hyped up. Always love ke catching up with you, man. So let's talk Coin Rivet. Let's talk crypto. Let's talk poker. What's going on? We're going to talk it all. Don't forget NFT. That's a hot word that's kind of been cold lately. We're going to cover True. different things, but give me a check-in. Where are you? What's going on? You look you look healthy. You look fresh. You got your nice background, some trophies, things going on. I've seen you having some big scores. What's the deal? Catch me up. Yeah, I'm, I'm posted up in Montreal right now. We're doing this in sort of early June. Beautiful Montreal. The city's got a, it's got something to it right now, Jeff. It's got an energy. It's got like some excitement. People are, you know, busting out of COVID and they're just like excited to be alive. So really having a fun time here. Streets are are packed. People are excited. And poker is good as well. You know, playing a um, couple days a week, probably three days a week for the summer is, is kind of what I'm going to be shooting for. Doing a good amount of study uh, and game is feeling sharp. You know, I think probably first time in my 12 years of playing poker where I feel like uh, really confident at the table that I'm probably the best player at the table in a lot of the tournaments I'm playing. Uh, that's a big call, but like, I believe it to be true. So life's good, man. Loving it. Beautiful. No, it's huge. Confidence is huge. And I think that's something that we've gone back and forth on. It's kind of a tricky one, right? Because as content creator i guess you could kind of put us in that category more so than playing obviously our career is a little different trajectory timing mm -hmm. twitch whatever but to be fair like that's how i feel in, in like years where it's like we've talked about the debate how do you study how do you you know there's a lot that goes in to twitch to youtube mm -hmm. to content to all the other things so how are you now finding how have you kind of now implemented this time to to work in studying and when did you sort of decide that hey i need to I want to I want to become not just a content creator but become you know one of the more respected high stakes you know or, or crushers in the game what what shifted for you or when did you say that now for the first time because I mean 12 years right this has been it's not like this you just decided this like recently where you started studying a lot more or what what shifted for you to, to get this confidence and, and to work in the studying well I think the like the the business model if you will for us is a little bit different than it is for most poker players so I wouldn't say like copy my approach to the game or, or your approach to the game, I think that would be not, yeah. wouldn't make a lot of sense for people. But I think when Twitch came out and YouTube came out and, and other platforms and stuff like that, um, and it was apparent that poker content was going to be something that was desirable, yeah. um, that really made sense. It, it was just obvious that like that was where uh, a lot of the upside was going to come because, hey, there's a lot of great poker players in the world, you know? Like there's a lot of people that are really sharp and can can compete and get out there and get after it. Um, the amount of people that can create sort of consistent professional content ar around poker is like a small amount. So my, my focus has always been on maximizing that side of things as much as I can. Yeah. And, and so the, the poker improvement has really come from the ability to network on that side of things, right? Create something valuable uh, that poker brands are interested in, you know, working with party poker right now, treat content with them. And then through that, I met guys like Ben CB, who runs Raise Your Edge Training, you know, and I'm able to do sort of one-on-one -on -one coaching with him and some of his other coaches. We just made a, a video training course, actually, where I'm sort of the student and he's the, he's the coach. And so been able to do one-on-one -on -one lessons with him, you know, in collaboration with Raise Your Edge and uh, work with like the hybrid guys, for example, uh, and doing some collaboration with them and, and get access to really... Sort of cutting edge my poker knowledge. Words, man. I love yeah. this. I love it. Raise your edge hybrid this is all my favorite things. So yeah, that's man. uh that's that's beautiful. And 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 you're but like was there a I'm just okay, give me your give me like a pie chart then because it's so interesting to me because I actually see so Corey Aldemar, right? He's just won the yep. main event, great guy, just like one of those guys, great people, you know, it is more like the the put him in the category of of poker sort of crusher, right? He's the high mm -hmm. playing, high stakes, just like absolute. GTO wizard, but great player, blah, blah, blah. He, I got to catch up with in Cyprus. We did some commentary for Triton and, you know, he started saying like, I'm actually interested in doing some content. Like in, in, at the world mm. series now, he's been doing some more stories, getting into it a bit. And that's like, that's where I think it starts getting fun. When you start like merging, right? You got the guys yeah. that are known as like content creators that are sort of like taking, okay, I've, I've been weighted that way. Now I want to get like really good at poker and like go 
go nuts with that side of it. And then you got the guys that are like super good at poker and maybe they sort of start coming in. Because then I think you get a really interesting mix because it's rare to find people that are like great poker players, but also great content creators, right? Like, I mean, I'm talking like in the top 1% or something, 2% of each, because you might have someone that's like a great content creator, pretty good at poker, or you have like a really good poker player, but it's hard. There's not so much time. And also if you're dominating one, you know, maybe it's almost like what's really, like I got to have some enjoyment and time, free time and other things. I can't just do everything. Do you, do you find it? Um, do you find it hard right now? Like kind of like you're torn. You're like, wow, like I'm getting so much, you know, I want to get to be the best, but I also want to be the best content. And there's only so much time. How do you break up your pie chart? Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's a thing, right? And I, Doug Polk is pretty famous for like, you can't do both. Like that's his stance. And I think he's wrong. Right. But I think you can't do both in a year. Right. Like, like you're going to have to decide if you want to grow a content brand, uh, you need to put in a shit ton of time to grow a content brand. Like you need to put in hours live on, on Twitch, making content to, to build the momentum. And then after you do that for like three, four years, then you can stream three days a week and sustain it. And, and then you can spend all this more time on, on, on training, right? Like on getting good at poker. So, uh, I think you just need to, if you do both, you need to have like a content moment and then a poker moment and, and sort of prioritize that. So, yeah, I don't know. Like there's just not that many hours in a week, chef. So it's just deciding like, what are you going to do for For me? Like something that I think is undervalued in poker, super undervalued in poker is longevity. Like we have all, we have all these hot shots that come out talk huge game, like I'm the best, they make it to the top and they retire three years later. It's like, cool, man, okay. Like, congratulations, you made your millions. Now what are you gonna do for the next 40 years? Like you hate your life and you hate what you just did and you never wanna play it again? Like I've been here for 12 years and I'm still liking playing poker. I'm still improving, getting better, sustaining myself after 12 years. I know you're similar too. Like what about longevity in this game? It's not like we're, we're not playing professional football out there where we we're just like, oh, we gotta retire because we blew out a knee. Like now nah, I guess we're going to do something else. Like, bro, I'm, I'm in this for decades and let's right. just sustain it, dude. Like, yeah, I'm, make it sustainable. I'm with you. I, I mean, again, you're the one who got me into YouTube. I we've, we've definitely collaborated. We've had a lot of good times. We've had stream house, stream boat, so many other cool ventures. And probably those are just the two that come out of my top of my head. Of course, mm. stream house was, was fun, but it's like, it is fun. And it's fun to see now there is sort of this influx with influencers, um, content creators. I mean, this, this whole thing that happened at live at the bike, just kind of just, this is, I, I should have notes. This is coin river, man. We're on the, we're off the cusp. I have nothing <laughs> planned. No idea. We, I know we could talk for hours. We have to try to limit it to, yeah. uh, to about an hour, but, um, th I mean, this was a big deal. Ninja, uh, Ludwig, mm. all these guys, Botez, you know, of course you had Helmut. That was Hustler. Key, you know, I mean, yeah. Hustler, that was Hustler. You gave, you yeah. gave that cred to the bike. It, Hustler sorry, deserves my, the credit sorry. on that. I, That's a big Hustler's one. crushing life. So yes, big, big, maybe we're not going to edit it out, but yes, Hustler, much love and congrats on what you're doing. Um, but the point is these live streams, these, these content creators and this stuff happening, it does seem like there's sort of a, a tipping point. I mean, look at the WSOP numbers, look at the live numbers online's doing well as well. Uh, even post COVID, but I mean, it seems like people love poker. And I think that that's, that's sort of what's happening right now is there's, there's a big, there's a kick up in the game and it does mm -hmm. feel like a time and an opportunity where the game really can grow and sort of have that, that big second win. What, what is your thoughts on this and, and with the state of where the game's at? And, and do you think this is something that isn't enough? It's just inevitable. Like everyone kind of plays poker a little bit or likes it. It just kind of got negative connotations that, that needs to to break free. What is, what is sort of your your thought on this 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 game let's talk about the hustler game what was your overall takeaway from that and what's possible in poker i mean amazing like like the hustler game with with botez and and ninja and mr beast and yeah, beast. I mean, a bunch i mean it's crazy. dude like like the biggest twitch streamer of all time and the biggest youtuber of all time played a poker game live you know like uh so that's an incredible moment like that lineup really did something special and it was so entertaining dude i watched the whole thing it ruined my sleep schedule for the week didn't care i was like dude i'm, I'm locked in this is amazing yeah uh so i think that's a great thing and listen poker this decade just like last decade just like 50 years ago and 50 years in the future is a beautiful game we both know it it's like the depth yeah. uh that you can get from from playing this game at a high level is amazing but it's also approachable to just play the thing that I think we need to do is we need to figure out how to innovate and and captivate a young audience. I don't mean under 18, but I mean 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds 
that are playing different games right now and are not sort of in tune with what's going on in our game. Like we need to figure out how to communicate with them uh, and show them that this game is fun and cool in a TikTok era where attention is fast. Poker is not a fast game, right? When you play live, it you know, you're settled in. You get 30 hands an hour, you're chilling, you're chatting. So we need to figure out how to do that. And I think we fail a bit there. I, I think we got to do better. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I, I also think just right now, technology is becoming so, so beautiful. There's so many different platforms and, and ways that things can get delivered. TikTok or short clips, uh, stories, different ways that people are finding to do creative things. I mean, what Patrick Leonard does on his Instagram, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen, right? Like, how does he not... He, you know, like, what is he doing? Like, he could just stream. Like, I don't know how he does it or someone else is doing the filming for him or what, but like, there's just, people are finding ways to be niche and be, you know, kind of building the game. And I just feel like it is, uh, it's sort of a, it's a very exciting time. And like uh, the show with the chess show, Queen's Gambit, right? That show yeah. with the COVID sort of the timing of it all really surged chess into a new stratosphere in terms of popularity and what's going on. And then the Botez sisters and, uh, so many other people you can name that are in the chess world, but that it's become mm -hmm. super popular and cool. And like poker, I just feel like has this sort of, because of rounders. I mean, I don't know if that's same for you. I'm sure we talked about it. I uh, forget mm -hmm. your exact take, but so many people are like, yeah, that's the movie, but what happened in rounders, right? Like it was like CD stuff, relationship yeah. breakup, bad, yeah. you know, cheating. Like it was really well done movie, but it kind of leaves you with like a taste of like, ah, eh, poker's cool. Or maybe I want to get into it, but it also kind of can, show some warning signs and i think that yeah you know it'd be fun to see poker have like a show or something where it's like it'd be such an easy show too you get like a group of guys or college kids yeah. or someone and like you have the you have all these different character types and people succeed and fail and go successful and use skill sets to other parts of life but i don't know i feel like poker is yeah. missing sort of that that like show or way that puts it in the light and shows some success stories that is uh you know not not negative so i, I that's I, true I man know. Yeah, like what poker is really like, which is not, it's not like rounders. It's not like that CD backroom game. Like, yeah, they exist, but like, dude, it's so right. much closer to chess than yeah. it is to rounders in terms of how the, how the community operates for sure. So, but, and part, part of the uphill battle we have, Jeff, is that a lot of the economics around online sites, such as the site, like party poker I'm with, right? Like the economic incentive for them is, is often, they're making a lot of their revenue, these companies from casino, and from sports, right? So they optimize yeah. for casino and sports. And from a legal and regulatory perspective, they operate for casino and sports. And the rules that they have to enforce when it comes to responsible gaming, when it comes to communicating how to talk about poker, are the exact same if you're talking about blackjack or if you're talking about poker. Now, both you and I know, well, I mean, the risk to someone playing a slot machine as opposed to playing poker, I mean, these are different stratospheres, right? Like the, the rules should not be the same in terms of, how to responsibly communicate with with right. an audience poker and slot machines you know like like, like slot machines yeah. is, is like heroin and and poker would be like pool because and they both can happen in a bar right like yeah, they're or different maybe cannabis things, right? cannabis that's now legalized it's like exactly. it's cool there's a little it's completely to it. completely different so like poker is just grouped Ooh. in this big group that has a negative connotation broadly and i think well i don't know how to fix that man the economics aren't aligned Right. Like the, 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 the companies that are, that are operating there, they're operating all, all options at the same time. And so it's just like, it's not a thing that I like, uh, and I'm not sure how to fix it as a poker player because poker is different. It's just different than these other things. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, it's, I think that's the constant, uh, that's the constant battle that, that's going on, like trying to find ways, trying to figure that out. It's it's just kind of like cat and mouse. It seems like every time that it, poker moves forward, that it goes backwards, right? Like it's like yeah. it's like one step forward, then there's this cheating scandal, or some some player yeah. high profiles come out, and it's like some bad stuff, or the Postle case, you know, which I don't even know what happened with that, but it was you know that that type of stuff, right? Because that's the stuff that similar to business, right? It's like there's huge stuff going on, corporations money stuff happening like it's not like po in the real world and real things there are people doing bad things and just like poker but it just gets kind of blown up bigger and because of the money and the, this kind of that that feeling that feel like it gets really put on a pedestal like the wrong way the wrong things get really brought yeah. to light right so yeah, i think that's 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 just one of the the, the kind of issues um let me ask you about your your schedule with live poker and does that fit in or just with your you know now 
how you've been operating is that that's something you've been able to do for a while and do you have any plans for our live poker world series main event anything playground poker shout out to the boys there phil yes. jk greatest one of the greatest card rooms in the world and have you been there at all recently or, or i haven't been you... since uh covid actually so i haven't okay. i haven't played any live poker since covid but i think my focus primarily right now is just on the online streets because i think it's where i can provide the most value you know uh tell interesting stories i'm enjoying playing online tournaments I know live poker is going to be a part of my life, right? Uh, I probably don't want to be grinding out four days a week of online tournaments when I'm like 50 years old, but I would love, you know, posting up at tournament stops, going to play a couple tournaments and and playing cash a couple times a week. So it seems like one of those things from Bill Perkins' book, Die With Zero, yeah, of, of like, course. think about your decades, right? Plan out your life sort of intentionally. And for me, this seems like a really good time to focus a lot of my time on online and live will come later. So that's kind of where where my mind's at when it comes to whether to grind it out on the streets. So yeah, online, online for me at the moment. Very, very nice. And what about um, other games? I mean, are you are you strictly Nolan Hold'em? Have you dove into any like the high lows or mixed mm -hmm. games at all, or, or PLO? I know I think I've asked you that off off camera, but tell me about your your what other games would you like to play other than Nolan Hold'em if you haven't dove in yet? What would be your sort of order of games you think that you that you might like? Thing is, I love tournaments, man. Tournaments are just like they're so dynamic, and and the situation is changing all the time. Like cash games are nice to play as well, and it's sort of a nice side mission. I don't like how everyone starts with the same blinds all the time, and you play for the same stakes every hand, and there's no like payout pressure or anything. Like like it's just so static. Um, so the tournament action is in Nolan Hold'em, but. That trophy right there is my only live poker win. It's a 550 euro PLO tournament. So like it's there. There's a love in the back of my mind for four cards. It's just like there, there's not enough action online for me to justify, you know? You, you got, you're in my 550 live PLO trophy as well from running up Reno, that shot, that, uh, that yeah. time. And I think I was there, your Barcelona one, right? That was in Barcelona. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So we were yeah the plo man there's that that game is it's a beautiful game that is a fun mm -hmm. it's a fun fun game uh and i gotta i gotta ask with um currently your next so okay let me just let me just get this clear so you're playing you're strictly online your content and you're now doing more studying but what is your um your sort of next thing because you seem always to be on the cutting edge right like you, mm -hmm. you you got me into youtube you, you saw the power you, i know you have a facebook page i'm gonna take we're gonna take a look at your website your twitch all these different things what is what is next for you is tiktok something you're still doing a lot of are you are you actively on that what is sort of your 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 content rollout plans currently and is there something new you're working on within poker that you like yeah on tiktok um tiktok is not real good with online poker stuff still so it's kind of like what was happening with facebook or excuse me, YouTube back in the day where things would get taken down and banned and it's like, hey, I didn't break the rules, but automated just gets taken down, you know, and and so TikTok is a little tough for poker right now, but hopefully that'll that'll fix in the future. Um, really, it's just like figuring out how to sustainably put out content on all the platforms and and do it in a way to where I still enjoy playing poker and and have enough time to study the game and get better every week and get outside and get active and and enjoy life like do all of that so twitch streams the youtube highlights the facebook videos the instagram clips the tiktok clips uh you know all of that coming out all the time and just getting better at poker every day so that's really the approach um and but there'll be a new platform you know in the next year something will drop one i hear talk about on tiktok sometimes be real don't know what it is but you know the kids are talking about it so like I'm sure I'll be there when it's a thing. Who knows, Jeff? Yeah. I don't know. It, yeah. It's you know, you it's just hard adapt. to keep up. It's yeah. hard to keep up. It really is. Um, and uh, let's 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 get into let's talk a bit about crypto. I got it. I got it. Before I forget, I love to do this with every guest. This is episode number twelve, if I'm not mistaken, on Coin mm -hmm. Ribbit and, and BTC. A nice to see a little pump there because it was kind of down the twenty sevens, twenty eights, sort of dicey waters where it's going to go and what could happen. I know you keep an eye on it, and of course, Ethereum also a little low for its normal where where it's been and, and, and dip it around. But what are you thinking about? Let's just start first off before we talk about what are your price prediction? Let's just get right into it. January one, twenty twenty three. Give me Bitcoin, and Ethereum price Man. prediction, then we'll go from there. Man, people are it's so bare out there, bro. 
everyone's talking like this is the multi-year bear, like we're going to take pain forever. And they might be right, dude. I don't know. We might just do a slow slide for years. I don't know. I'm more optimistic because I'm just a contrarian. Everyone's terrified. No one wants equities. No one wants crypto. Everyone is just like, I want to own Coca-Cola. And it's I'm just like, man, it might be a good time to buy. That's all I'm saying. So I'm thinking I'm going to go back to all-time highs. I'm going to say 60K Bitcoin. Uh, I'm going to say 4,500 ETH. All right. Uh, Bitcoin, I think, so close to all-time high. Big, all-time 68 yeah. or 9. So you're in that, you're going 60. It's going to return days. back to where it was, basically. I'm I'm thinking like pump cycle is coming. And a lot it's of variance in that though, dude. I'll, Bitcoin <laughs> keeps you on your toes. I mean, I've been yeah. in and, and, and aware of it, heard of it different times. But like when it went from, you know, 800 to 19,500, I remember like the, the Thanksgiving Christmas time, it was like it was like 11k, 12k, 13k refresh. You know, you couldn't, no one could sleep. 14, yeah, 16, 18. but then mm -hmm. it went from 19 down to three or 3,500, yeah. and then back again. And then, back. I mean, the thing is not for the faint of heart, and it just it just constantly gives you. I mean, if you love poker, if you love action, you got to have a little something in crypto just to just to keep yeah. the you yeah. know, it's just like you just never sleep, it's always going, it's always there, it's always moving. It's not like the stock market, it's already up to 31,450. I think it's up a bit since we been on the, the the pod but i mean this is uh it, it's yeah. interesting because it just is not a guarantee and you have people democrat republican mask no mask pro vax and you got you got big is it going up is it going down people are going to make yeah. cases people uh -huh. and what what are, what's the entry point did you get in, in the 60s did you get in when it was 500 did you get in some in, at different spots and and people feel different types of ways but i mean people are getting slapped slapped around i mean they are like in There's the last year or two, it, people are you know and then you got it's just you feel so fishy depending and the luck is it, it's so wide right like you could have yeah. got in like you could be sharp and an investor and you're like all right like you know what i'm finally gonna get in at 50 and now it's 30 or whatever so anyway it is fascinating i think it's it's curious and obviously in poker you know luck's on coin rivet there's use cases for it it's easy yeah. to do make transactions uh we, we don't have to it just makes sense right we get it it makes sense um so so we can talk a little more crypto, but also NFTs. I know you are into art. You you buy art yeah. when you hit certain scores. You get art. You like NFTs. Tell me sort of how, what your feelings are on NFTs and, and how they, what, what do you like more, crypto or NFTs? So I don't own any FT, NFTs. I own some crypto. Like I got into Bitcoin at like 3K or so was when I first bought like my first uh, Bitcoin purchase. And I unfortunately just didn't have a lot of money, so <laughs> I couldn't like whack down a number on it. But, you know, I've been in, been sweating crypto since like 2014, and then I actually bought some in 2017. Um, NFTs, I haven't bought any, but I love reading about NFTs. And I'm, I'm in the sort of community. I'm sweating it, seeing what's going on. Uh, and I think it's just a great idea. So I'm really enjoying it. I think just so much is going to change about, the space and it's cool right now. Crypto bunks, you know, board eight yacht club, uh, V friends, some of the three of them that kind of stand out to me right now. Um, but really, I think about NFTs in how they're deployed right now as as brands and as clubs, right? Um, you know, lifestyle brands and, and clubs. And I think there's a lot more that can come out of them. So I'm just an observer, dude. I'm an observer in the NFT space. I am not sure on NFTs as investments right now, given the way the valuations are, um, but I like it. And and I need to get some more skin in the game. You know, I need to get just some little pieces, join a couple crews and just like see what's going on. But yeah, how about you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very bullish. I think that I also believe it'll go to all time highs. I just think that it is... Um, it's just, it's tricky. I, this is my biggest thing. I talk about Kelly criterion, which is a very mm -hmm. interesting principle. I think I've, we've talked about this at some point before. Have you, does that sound familiar to you or no? Yeah. 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 Like what, how much you bet, right? Yeah. Uh, like yeah. the appropriate bet size at the different time. Now, again, similar mm -hmm. to poker, if you're 18 and you know, you, you're making a little bit of money or whatever. And like your risk tolerance is different to if you're 50 or 70 or 60. Uh, and if you have kids and a family or whatever. So like my biggest thing is I like to just say, I think to take a percentage of your net worth or disposable income, put aside a, a piece of it into crypto. Now, you know, I think it's crazy, right? In poker in particular, if you were to take, let's say uh, like a hundred people, 
maybe some well-known players or um, yeah. established people or people just like within Twitch community. And you were to look at people that you kind of know or have contact or one degree of separation or like go to your Twitter feed, right? And just take like the hundred people that you know that are in poker. I bet you they're, they're most of them, their crypto allocation to their net worth is, is dis, uh, disproportionately probably too high in theory for like, what is right. the pro appropriate risk? It's just yeah. like, they've come into it somewhat at different times or they get have it some and they just, it's like, all right, you know, it could be 40% or 60 or 30% or 50%, or which is kind of insane, right? No matter what the, Mm. concerning how volatile it is but you know i think that like a safe recommended number that i would feel confident telling like my parents or friends of people i would just say like five to seven percent of your net worth i think that's like a pretty decent like smart bet yeah. right that that's sort of yeah. like where i come in now uh, after that it's up to you how much ga gamble you want to have i think if you only have like one or two percent you know it's not really a risk and you're not really pushing it and if it's like 30 or 40 i think it's you know you, you you're just you're gambling big time so yeah i, I think like yeah, sort yeah. of in that 10 to 20 is probably like what i would say is like okay and again depending on your income and what your 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 disposable income um that, that's how i would that's how i would kind of sum it up without getting too deep into the rabbit right. hole yeah I, well I, th I like i think a really important aspect of this jeff too is what's the goal right uh, another thing I learned from Bill Perkins book, I love Die With Zero. I think it's a great book, man. And honestly, Die With Zero made me uh, like less capitalist, which I don't think was Perkins' uh, intention, but it did. So the yeah. point is like, what's your what's your financial goal? Like you want to you want to get to Perkins level where you get to sail on a yacht or in Italy? It's like, bro, you need to hit some home runs and you need to maximize risk, right? Like for for me, I kind of realized like. I don't think I want to get to that level. I would rather trade some of my time and like less risk um, to just hit a less, like a lower level of wealth for myself personally, right? So like I can take risk off the table. So it doesn't make sense for me to have like, you know, 50% of net worth in crypto trying to hit moonshots when I don't need it. But like, you know, if you're 18 and it makes no difference, like maybe you can take a big risk because like, what's the big deal? You got You got a ton of runway in front of you, so... I, yeah. I think it's a really smart way to invest of once a year, take a look. All right. What percentage do I want in equities? What percentage do I want in crypto? What percentage do I want in NFTs? When one moons reallocate it to the other ones, just hold yeah. that percentage and, and adjust yeah. it based on how much risk you want. You know? Yeah. I, I, the an important part about this though, like here's the thing about all that. It's true. It's similar to what you're saying. Like, <laughs> oh, crypto, I wish I had more money. I had 18 years old, depending, right? Unless you're you come into some money or you have whatever like it's hard to just be like oh, okay like yeah i'm 18 and i you're making that money you're starting playing poker or you're you're playing around you have a little bit of money to to to, to do do stuff with it's tricky right because like you can make some great bets but even if they pan out big you're not necessarily gonna you make that 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 money so it's a, it's a sweet spot it's a very yeah. tricky thing right it is hard to it's hard to hit those those grand slams and also you know it, it's just it's tricky that's why it's so fun but i would also say that part of the most fun part of life in my so far what i've taken is like it's part of the game right like it's 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 fun the process it really it is, is fun right. if you like what you're doing and that's the biggest thing love what you do because ultimately like i'm 35 what are you 30 29 31 no. oh yeah 31 that, okay so i mean you know like yeah listen we've we've done some different things we've we've explored and put some time into different areas of our life but like i think when we look back hopefully that we are able to I'll knock on wood like when we're 60 70 50 later it's like you get to look back and like all right you know hopefully everything's you're secure solid whether you got the yachts and, and private planes or whatever but you're like you know what i i had fun i did what i wanted and you know ultimately you got to take some risks i think that's the biggest thing like you really do like that point you just got you got to go for it sometimes and um you know i i i have so many stories and so much crazy stuff on like hits or spots i wish i would have done more or you know stuff yeah. that didn't work out and it's just always like the, it's so obvious sometimes too the stuff that's like like even crypto right now it's like so obvious you know i it's just like i'm, I'm almost like it's it's the, the phrase it's never enough comes into mind right because it's like mm. it just but but then again i've had complete flops or stuff that i'm sure is going to do well and it just doesn't right so you, you, that's the that's the point you can't just yeah. put all your eggs in one basket and you got to enjoy the process and some nfts or whatever it's like you also got to enjoy it because a lot of that stuff probably will be you know not not 
not super valuable similar to art right you buy art yeah. it's like mm. you're buying art you don't know if it's gonna it's not you're not buying it just you, you buy it because you love it or it's like something yeah speaks to you. you're not like not oh even, i'm gonna yeah you're like i'm gonna 10x this or it's gonna be worth more one day and no. i mean yeah. it probably isn't or whatever but yeah. um yeah anyway uh art's, art's a daily dividend right you get to see it on the wall every day it puts a smile on your face so that's like the that's the dividend with art and i think you know you can buy some big name brands brand artists uh from like uh brand spots and get a return but i think uh if you just lock you know walk up to a local art shop and buy a piece and expect it to return you money i think you're gonna fail like you need you need you've got to be a sharp i think in the market to to return money on art it's just not a game i'm playing really i don't think it's yeah. well or you, you got to put your time in you're going to be a bit yeah. of a fish at the beginning and that's yeah. sort of um you know i think that's also another thing about poker i always like to mention is it's not necessarily about winning or losing, right? Like you, you, if you are starting out playing poker and you go to a table and go play $1, $2 at the, the Encore or Aria in Vegas, like, yeah, hey, you're probably going to lose. But, you know, it's there are things you can take away from it. There's learnings from it. There's experiences from it. And mm -hmm. if you do put time in and get better, you start to appreciate that process along the way. I mean, look, Bill will tell you himself, like now Bill's worked with hybrid. Um, you know, we can, we could go down and talk a lot about that, but he's gotten a lot better. He had the land entice challenge where Landon pulled out. Um, you know, he's Bill's lost money along the way. I mean, you can go back and look on TV or some of the stuff he's played and you know, whatever, but he like Bill gets a lot of value from poker. He's met, mm. he's met a lot of people. He's meeting different industry leaders. I bet yeah. you if you were to take Bill's like time allocation and poker, if you were actually to be able to track every dollar won or lost, whatever that comes in at where he's at. I mean, look, Bill cashed the 1 million pound one drop, uh, he, or I'm sorry, um, Triton uh, charity, right? For millions, he, he yeah. has another six, uh, one drop. I think he got fourth, 100K, like 1.9 million. He's had some great scores. He's had some big cash wins. He's also had big losses. But if you were to like look back, he would probably tell you, um, and I, I know so like, that a lot of the experiences and relationships and things that have come auxiliary to poker have been some of the best value or learnings in his life. I mean, and yeah. I, I would say that for myself too. It's like, you know, a lot of stuff that I've met some of my best friends at a poker table. I've had some of my best contacts at a poker table or indirectly from a poker game. And then if you were to look back and say, oh, what's your net win and loss, your time hours you put from playing tournaments and all that. I mean, I, my answer would be, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. You know, mm. it would just be like, no, like, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. it's like, it's just, it, it's, it's, I wouldn't do it any other way actually is what yeah. I would say. So, yeah, no. um, I mean the piece of investing we didn't talk about there was, uh, was like sort of the startups and sort of small upcoming companies and stuff like that. Right. And I think if, if I break down the, you know, the projects I've been able to be a part of and the small investments I've been able to get down and or collaborations I've been able to do through just networks I've made in poker, the EV on those projects is higher than my whole poker career. Right. Like in dollars. And, and that's just literally from getting to know some people that are passionate and motivated and are sharp in their field and being like, Hey, I have these skills. Can we work together? Let's do some stuff. We do too. And then it's like all of a sudden, boom, you know, you've, you've got an opportunity here. So I think, you know, listen, I, I met Bill Perkins in poker. I got to go on his boat in the Virgin islands and play poker stream boat. Right. Did the ultimate sweat bet with him. Like, like the things that have come through just getting to know that guy and being able to learn with him and spend some time with him. That's through poker, man. Like what, how else are you going to do that as a 20 year old kid? How else are you going to get in the yeah. game and have conversations with successful people in your community as a 20 year old? You can't like, you can't, you can't rock up to the club and expect to talk to successful business owners, you know, in a town of 80,000 people, you're going to find them at the poker table, man. It's like a great opportunity to socialize, get to know some people outside of your circle and develop connections and work together. It's, it's a, Dude, poker is the best, actually, Jeff. It's actually so good. I I know it. I, I, it is. It's just the fact. I mean, it's also similar to golf. It's it's a similar. Yeah. It's a more practical way because in golf, you're only with like a group of four usually. It's a mm -hmm. long day for like what it is. You don't yeah. just have time. You get to talk, but still, you get to learn how you handle someone, how they win, how they lose, how they handle other people's success. Do they cheat? Do they do unethical things? Like all these little yeah. things, and and you know, little stuff, right? Oh, do they treat this? Like you can how they tip people how they talk to people how they treat the caddy like similar in poker at the table you get to see a lot and get to get a a, a lot of kind of auxiliary info from them yeah. about how they handle and deal you know and and you can you know you can tell you can also tell about how someone handles a bad beat right like 
do they do they curse the person do they blame the dealer do they blame mm-hmm. whatever are they are they happy when you get lucky genuinely and you know but anyway that we could talk a lot about that but it, it's i think we're we're unified on that that we love poker it's a great game it provides it is uh i think it's it's going the right direction right now it's uh it's exciting it's an exciting time to be involved in in poker um what else jamie i, I got so I, I i don't have an actualist i know we i, I have like the NFT area, I know there's there's um, there's more to talk about. Crypto, there's more to talk about. But I, I have the thing to... with that too, uh, Jeff. Here's something that was on my mind that we didn't get talked to. So maybe this is is not the direction, but it, I'm curious what you think about it, right? Because yeah, I'm a bit of a like an optimist and a hype show, and I like to be involved in things and get excited about things, right? Um, but then I'm wondering if there's anything that worries you about crypto, right? Now that we're in the bear market and it's really trendy to talk about all the things that could go wrong about crypto, is there anything that concerns you about the way things are going? You know, something that it, to mind before I, I let you run with it, for me, it just in my mind, is that I think we've seen Bitcoin and the conversations around crypto become a little bit more political and a little bit more polarized, right? Like we've seen it become... Uh, it's always been a very sort of libertarian and freedom and for the people kind of thing. But we've seen it align sort of specifically on a side. And we've seen pushback from a new generation of like, this is bad, this is bad for the environment, I'm not interested in it, right? So it's a little polarized and that worries me in that, is this something for everyone or is this a thing that's going to polarize to half of the population? Uh, So that's something that's concerning to me. Do you have anything in mind where you're like, "Mm, I'm not sure this is going to work or... Or what do you think? Yeah, I'll say that this whole like Luna de-pegging and sort of thing and mm. people like I, I had nothing like don't know much about that. I've heard that the word I don't even know. What, you know, there's a lot of people staking or doing this type of different stuff. And then it just seemed like a lot of people that I believe and trust that are very smart kind of got affected or blindsided. And, um, you know, I, I think the regulation part of it is it's it's a bit uh it's a bit dark, right? Like where it's just a little uncomfortable where the, the security, the processes, and, that, and you hear these stories, right? I have people that have gotten hacked or this and that. And it's like, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, you know, there is some darkness to there. Like I just, like yeah. it's a sort of like scary thought where it's like, all right, I have my Wells Fargo. I have my checking account. It's like, all right, my money's safe. There's a protocol. There's like security. There's this and that. So I just think like, you know, still that hasn't really come clear where like my parents or um, people are just super comfortable and it's easy where it's just gotten right. so, so mainstream. Um, if that's sort of answering your question, I just think that there's like, there is stuff that has happened where it's like still, it kind of mind blows your mind where you're like, wow, like this is, this is that similar to poker where it's like, all right, everything's great. Things are going good. A lot of good news. And then like the, the bad news gets really pushed so hard and heavily mm-hmm. that it kind of sets things back. So, you know, I yeah. don't think it's like a clear, like, yeah, am I bullish? Do I think it's going to ultimately make sense and work? Um, yeah, I just think that there is still hurdles, you know, now there's this Ethereum too, or new thing happening. And like, there's all these sort of, um, you know, projects and stuff getting worked on. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit overwhelming. It's like hard to keep up with all of it. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't have that carved out of my day to like keep up on the crypto news and, and everything. And then you just kind of hear like on your Twitter feed or shit stuff happens and something, you know, if it's really bad or you see the price get smoked, you kind of you know, see that yeah. something's going on. But um, yeah, I think that's like, that's the regulation part is the, the most confusing and uh, I guess it's unclear to me. So that that's, yeah. um, that, I think that's that's how I feel. Like the Luna thing just seemed like really bad, right? That was just like a bad that deal. That was crazy. Yeah, that was absolutely crazy, man. And I didn't I didn't have any uh, anything invested yeah. there, but I knew some people that had stuff locked yeah. up, you know, for a week me or whatever, too. couldn't get it out. So that, you know, that's totally burnt to... Uh, to a crisp to zero for them or whatever. And that's, I mean, make it pain, you know, like there's, there's just some risk in DeFi that isn't stated up front, right? Like we're seeing it come to light of like, okay, you are putting trust yeah. in, in some mechanisms that can fail. And for sure. And likewise on, on the crypto times, I can't stay up, but I will tell you one of the most tilting things possible is when you have a good profitable Sunday and then Monday, you know, Bitcoin price goes down like 2K or something and you're just like now stuck for two days and you're just like, oh my God. Or the or the, the vice versa is pretty nice too. When you have a big losing day, you lose 10 and then Bitcoin pumps 2K and you're like, okay. All right. <laughs> you know, like that, the 
the life, the net worth swings really puts poker in perspective uh, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's in, on, if you think about it at that level too, like a lot of the guys, like let's just take some of these 50 Ks, 100 Ks um, that are happening. Like WSOP right now is a 50 K, right? And a lot of guys are into crypto and such. So it's kind of wild, right? You could literally play like a 50 K tournament and you're, you know, if you have a decent Bitcoin position or, or a crypto position and within the tournament, if you bust or double or like win, you know, it, it, I mean, let's just say you bust, like it could literally, it, it just wild, like the swing, right? It could yeah. be like your, yeah. your tournament or how you can, or maybe you traded crypto to buy into the tournament and it can actually be like swinging that hard, right? Where it like you could save money or lose a lot or you're paying much more than what you did. Right. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting beast crypto. It is uh it's a fun thing. Um, yeah. What, yeah, uh, I, I got to ask you now, crypto or uh, YouTube or Twitch, what, what has been more enjoyable thus far, the process, Do you, streaming or the if you look at your sort of your library of, of, of memories? And if you were to go back and look through your streams or look through, you, you know, the YouTube stuff, what, what, do, you, what do you think is more enjoyable to, 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 to watch and or like memory wise, what is just, or is it just so different that you can't really compare them? So I think Twitch is pretty special. And tw and YouTube can be like that too if you live stream on YouTube, which I don't. I just live stream on Twitch and then I put videos on YouTube. But like the thing is content on YouTube, content on Facebook, content on Instagram and on TikTok is a commodity, right? Like the ability to develop a depth of relationship with your audience in poker is really, really difficult on all those platforms. They don't connect with you as a human being. It's about the money, it's about the action, it's about the thrill, and they couldn't care less who's delivering it, right? Mm -hmm. And so my approach on those platforms is volume of content. Put out a lot, put it out consistently, and you're gonna generate returns because that's what those platforms want. They want a lot of content consistently. They'll boost your stuff. Partners and advertisers want their content seen consistently, higher numbers, you can get a you know a bigger deal or whatever. So that's my plat my my approach. Twitch is different, right? Like you develop a relationship with human beings that you see and you have conversations for hours, right? So like Twitch is home. Twitch is where I know people. And YouTube, I have 90,000 subscribers and like a lot of people see my stuff every day. Facebook, I think I have 35K, but like we don't have that same connection so so twitch is home for sure Make, makes a lot of sense and with with um the the vlog tell me a bit about the the live vlog stuff because i know i've talked to matt your brother staples of course who has had quite a journey and ride in, in twitch as well and and now you know is, is definitely a household name but like that period during ultimate sweat and when you were bouncing around and traveling yeah. could you maybe just like kind of break that down and explain like how crazy like that process is with flights multiple people a team yeah. you're doing vlogs i mean because listen i've done the travel with the laptop which i'm traveling right now and you know i've done this for a long time where i was streaming on twitch and did it as well but with the laptop and like an auxiliary monitor i mean you had like your desktop towers i mean you were shipping stuff multiple suitcases boxes mm. like tell me a little bit about how how much goes into that and and also like how how to when you break down one of those setups and, and like what which is worse or more upset like is it the breaking down or the setting up of the new one or just the whole the whole in between because it's a lot it's stressful it's got <laughs> yeah. stuff getting broken. i wasn't sure you know? yeah. <laughs> i wasn't yeah. sure if you were talking the breaking down of the mind after that experience or if you're talking about like the setup during it um <laughs> no i mean that year was will is the most insane year that i can even think of in my own life i will never top it in terms of activity ever and I don't think anyone listening to this will be able to top it in terms of activity in a year. It was bonkers, Jeff. It was absolutely insane. I don't know what we were doing or thinking or why, right? We go to Vienna. We, we're going to live in Vienna for three months and go to Vienna and then go to Rosbadov and then go to Panama and then we do Streamboat, right? Like this all happens in, in three weeks and pack up your stream, you know, in a suitcase, fly to Streamboat, fly the brother, fly the other brother that's vlogging, get on the stream boat. We have the infamous stream, right? Where someone asks in the chat, how crazy would it be if the two brothers were the same weight? Bill Perkins snaps off, I'll give you 50 to one. Matt and I look, and I was like, Matt, we gotta take it. How much can we bet? 
pause. 3K could have been, he could have said five so easily. Could have said, five. Yeah, 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 it could have been like pet. that. Been that was so close. 3K, yeah. I was like, Matt, we got to take it. He's like, Okay, boom, life changed. I need to lose 100, uh, 118 pounds. Matt's got to gain like 60. We have a year and it just popped off. But like, you know, we were vlogging the experience. So we were putting, we probably put out about 150 vlogs during that year. But then we also lived in like six or seven countries. Uh, and so we had to fly around my brother to, to do the vlogging. Then we had to change locations, take down the stream, put up the stream. We were streaming yeah. on average four or five days a week. Uh, I met my fiance during that year. She started to live with us. I had a new relationship, you know, Costa Rica city gets flooded. It's like, dude, it was just it's insane. Almost in a year. Impossible. I'm, I'm listen, I, I did a miniature version uh, right now. I'm doing a, a fitness thing to get down to like 12 and a half percent yeah. body fat. And, you know, I have like a Bill's trainer, you know, this, all this stuff, like things and all this little stuff. It's, I have a three year old and I and I'm not streaming every day. It's almost impossible like to find time, to get in the gym, do all your activities. I, like I, it's honestly not even I don't know how you possibly like the days where you're like traveling with yeah. the stuff setting up, it seems impossible. Cause then to actually have to stream as well. Like I think Matt was talking about that too. That it was a bit, you know, it's overwhelming. Cause it's like your folks, you have such a big sweat on the weight thing, but you also have yeah. to kind of maintain your, your stream and, and, and doing that. Cause it's, it's, it's long days. It is long days to stream, work yeah. out, eat. It's almost impossible. How much looking back though, how much do you think you sacrificed on like streaming and growing like that to like win the bet because i mean there must have been days we just didn't stream for or we or even periods like last of time. two months the last two months there was you know i'd stream maybe two days a week or something um but the first half it was full dude like the day here's the day right wake up at eight go down to a coffee shop in croatia bring the computer start the vlog plan the vlog have a coffee hike for three hours <laughs> Right. Casual, casual, casual three hike, hour hike. Three hours, you know, come home, probably grab a chicken skewer and a salad from somewhere as the lunch. You're vlogging this whole time. And then you fire up the stream at about noon and noon, one o'clock, and you stream till 9 p.m. And then after that, you do your emails, you do your DMs, whatever. You wrap up the vlog, vlog gets edited, go to sleep and run it again, like, and do it for months. And then you got the trainer coming in some some days on the vlog instead of the three hour hike you'd go to the gym you'd lift weights come back at the it was just uh you know it was every day for a whole year it's crazy and let me shout out to mike vacanti absolute legend and just yeah. such a great guy and fun and, and great to have him ryan obviously he works with gary v and done stuff with him and maybe even is still doing or recently was doing uh have you caught up with him at all recently yeah we talk we we talk occasionally and, and catch up and see what's going on we talk about we talk about crypto and NFTs a little bit, actually. You should you should get them on this podcast. I think that'd be pretty good. Yeah, he'd, uh, he'd be great. We talk books. We talk life. Yeah, yeah, man, it's good. He's a legend. And I, I th what I brought, what I was thinking about him too, is with the Gary Vee thing. Ha looking back now, because I think also Bill has such a unique way of understanding value and like spent, you know, just just gets it all. And I, I definitely again, I've known Bill since 2012. And considering one of my best friends, I've learned a lot, as you said, being around him, just kind of like mm. stuff make clicks. You're like, wow. Or you see him doing this. You're like, <laughs> like, of course you should do that. Right. Like, why would yeah. I not do that to get that? Or like in terms of, you know, output to get input and he just gets all these things. What would you say? Cause during this time, looking back to what would be something you would have done differently? Where you like, would you have hired someone else? Would you have added something, some other thing that would have made the process smoother? Cause I mean, again, it's, it's kind of a miracle you were able to do what you did and, and yeah. get like the vlogs out and the things out. But like, would there have been like someone there you have like an assistant on site to like do, like, is there anything that would have made your life much smoother? Do you think, or I mean, or cause you had a lot of overhead, you had people, you were flying around, you're with people oh, yeah. like there's, it's not, you like remember that house we bought Jeff, dude, that is my biggest purchase in my life to this day. The, my biggest spend ever was on renting a house for Streamboat 2 during that bet. Did, and, when the uh, hurricane came, we yeah, we got lose. three days out of thirty, dude. I think I dropped like thirty k on our crew to rent that spot for thirty. We have days. a credit. We have a credit there. We have a credit. But people got relationships, man. People got schedules. We got different. I mean, dude. I know, but we should probably like uh, that's that's got to be on a sheet somewhere for like a value little asterisk. Like we should. I mean, I, 
again, that no, it's crazy if you think about that. The fact that no one proactively between you, Bill obviously doesn't like, he's not going to no. forget that. But like between like Matt, you, me, Kevin, someone could have like, like tried to like inquire about, hey, like, could we get a vacay out like Dude, a week or uh, that, that was a, yeah. my net worth at that time was probably like 100K. And I just dropped 30% of it on rent for one month for In the hurricane content. of all time. And deal, boom, of the history. Days. But I did get to fly on on Bill's jet to New York, so that was pretty cool. That was nice. Got to hang out in New York for a week. I mean, and then down to Costa Rica. Like it just continued. It's crazy. It, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's. I, I mean, the fact that Kevin wanted to stay and there was a prison break on the island, <laughs> and he would have been there. I mean, that was. I just remember. I remember going to the airport because I was scheduled to leave already. I don't know if you remember this. I had to go to LA and do something for yeah. like two days, and then mm -hmm. I like. I think I left my computer and stuff there. Yeah, I had to get it like way later down the line because like I was just gonna come back, and then it was just like I remember like going. We to left the it. We left yeah. stuff, dude. We we're like, oh yeah, we'll be back in a week, like no problem. And it ended up yeah. being a big. big yeah. Deal. Yep. But I just remember the Uber or the driver to the airport was like, oh yeah, these, you know, this hurt. It's nothing like this is, this is like a tropical storm. This is all mm -hmm. like everyone gets worked up. And then, I, I mean, yeah, that was no joke, but um, yeah, interesting memories, interesting times. I mean, I think the stream house was one of the most fun times too. That was just like, yeah. that was, that was pretty, pretty like that's one, for example, right? Like that's where I think the answers always go bigger. Right, like, because in that scenario, between all of us, we could we could have figured out we could have got like a nicer house. I was maxed, Jeff. What do you mean, dude? I literally dropped down thirty percent of all the money I had. No, no, to not rent the spot out. in Montreal. Oh, Montreal, bro, I, dude. I didn't have the resources, Jeff. You're a couple of years ahead of me, bro. Like, I no, can drop it now, but I didn't have point. it. You're missing my point. You're missing the point. Like I'm saying, I'm saying about me personally, like I'm saying yeah. that moment, I would yeah. have like it, for an extra, whatever, a day Canadian, right? Mm -hmm. The answer is, it would have been just like, go big. To be fair though, there was almost that really sick place, right? You got like someone, we had, that, that would have, like, that, that would have been, been the play. I forget what happened with that, but. That I do remember been. you rocking up to the stream house in Montreal as Kev, Matt and I kind of just posted up in this like 1900s, like bunker of a house. You know, you you're coming. Amelia comes by for a couple of days, and like, dude, it was a grindhouse. Like, it was just setups and like little school beds. Basically, was all there was in that spot. Yeah, I, I think I was engaged or like getting married, and like yeah. later that, like in December, it was like November. Shout and out it was to Amelia like, for putting up with that, dude, because that was uh... yeah. <laughs> kudos to her. That was that was really. A, I mean, that was that was a, we were pushing it there. But I mean, Montreal is such a great city. It's all good. Plenty yeah. of fun. And go out but yeah the the, the house was not world class um well i think uh i'm trying to think i had one more thing i did want to cover but we there's so many memories so many different times i guess i would um yeah maybe tell me what what is what's been like a signature milestone moment for you poker wise career i know you've had some good scores lately was there one specific moment was it because of like how big the stream was or the score significantly like is there one if you had to pick one thing that stands out as your best like stream moment from from streaming on twitch poker wise what what would that be i've had a few i think the like the first one that stands out is i won the biggest daily tournament on the schedule when i first signed my first professional contract on the day of my signing you know, so is I think the people at the company at the time were kind of sweating it because they're like, oh, God, like this looks terrible. Like this, we signed this guy and he wins a tournament first day. Like, come on, you know. Um, but yeah, everyone in the company was watching the stream. It was like a big deal. And I shipped, you know, the big one on nine on that day, which was at the time the biggest tournament. And uh, so that was like that was kind of a stars aligned thing. Uh, I think Ultimate Sweat was a pretty powerful experience as well so streaming some of that and and doing that um and last year was great it's been it's been great working with party poker uh we collaborated uh for a good three years you and i jeff and i'm continuing yeah. continuing the process with them so last year i had three streams with over ten thousand viewers uh made a deep run in millions online got 19th that was close but i got second in the wpt 500 for 105k which is my biggest score ever online so that was super fun and I won a tournament for about 70. Uh, I think it was a 530 knockout. I got first place. So that feels good, man. You know, 12, again, the longevity thing kind of hypes me up, you know, 12 years into playing this game. 
still out there competing in high stakes online and holding my own with a positive win rate, like that's that feels good, you know? It feels good to still be doing that and and enjoying it and not hating the game. It's like uh, I feel happy about that. I'm not gonna lie. Proud of that, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. And and your and your parents, they still how I know Matt was telling me they, they like keep an eye on it. And I know he was at home for a while. He's got his own place and he's he's moving and shaking. But are they are you how how hard do your parents sweat it and your brothers? Are they do they keep an eye on you and, and check in or they message you when you have a deep run or score? Or are they are they just kind of numb to it now because you do it so often and whatever? Or, or when you have a big score, are they there? Do they know when you have those Matt big streams going? They know. They know. I get a text after the stream all the time. I actually forgot to send you a text, Jeff. My parents were visiting Montreal, and my mom was wearing the Flow Poker Show hoodie. We went to check out the uh, the F1 racetrack. I took a nice shot, the Flow Show at the Montreal uh, track. I forgot I to send it. it to you, but it's I got it in the camera roll. I'll send it. It's they're good, the man. That counts. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, great. exactly. No, they, it, nice. they're good. They're supportive for sure. I mean, I think they didn't really know what we were doing. 12 years ago when we first got into the game, there's no sort of family history with poker or gambling at all. So I think they were a little concerned and hesitant, you know, <laughs> they're both yeah. teachers. Like it's a, it's an interesting career when you don't know much about it, but they're, I think they're pretty hype now and on board. So, yeah. And, and, and and what do you what is your what is your thought about a sort of governing body? You know, there's FIFA, there's um, whatever, right? For anything, PGA, tours, NBA. There's diff, diff commissioner. There's there's stuff going on. And poker is complicated, of course. There's different sites. There's different rules. We've had some drama, some players, some stuff. I don't want to get into specifics, but there's been you know it's gotten to attention. Do you think there could be something? And would you be interested in being involved if there was sort of a governing body or representatives from the major sites? Um, yeah. And do you think it's even possible? Do you think it's possible to do something like this? Hundred percent. I think you need some great leaders. Uh, I think you can hundred percent do it. Every other game and sport does something like this to where people come together and sort of agree on the way that they want things to happen. Poker is one of the only games that are as big as it is that doesn't have something like this. So it totally makes sense. But the the economics are weird in poker, right? All of these big poker brands are competing against each other. There's often not a lot of incentive to work together. So you need a figurehead and someone to drive things forward that is willing to be selfless, right? Like for me, I work with party poker. So for me, can I lead a charge while collaborating with all these other brands and bringing them in? Like it doesn't work so well. Uh, probably not the guy. Rob Young, a guy we know has, has said, hey, I'm willing to kind of help this thing and bring this forward. So it's a really selfless activity. It put a ton of time into something that's not going to return you anything and bridge the gap between these different communities i think it would be great and i got trust in rob young i mean both of us know like we both know rob young we worked with him really closely at party poker for a while and um i mean i think he just he does the right thing often and and he's a great leader like i don't know about you but in my three-year experience working alongside him i learned so much about how to lead people and lead projects and just be be a leader, you know, I learned a ton from him. So I yeah. hope that he can do something with it. Yeah, no, I mean, can't say enough great things about Rob. I just got to catch up with him in Vienna. He was in Madrid as well. Actually had a couple of final tables. I don't know if you saw that hand where he basically like sweat his cards. Did you see this controversy Didn't where he it. like, no, it's crazy. He basically would have, well, the, he had aces. A guy was essentially all in, but not in short deck. And he had Queens and was all in. And then Rob had aces and then like, was confused if he was all in but it was it was weird because i like he like showed him the cards like sweated it and then he had aces so then the guy just so basically rob just like called instead of um putting them all in right mm -hmm. he thought he was like all in and then he the guy saw he had aces right like the player right. and then the guy had queens and it was he put in like two-thirds of a stack or 70 percent or 80 percent. but then the flop was like ace high or something and then the guy just like folded and then he came back to win the tournament chris brewer it was like a hundred wow. uh 30k or 25k um short deck event i think 30k you know they, it was a thing on twitter about it but anyway um side story but yes rob i think is the guy that can get it done um part of that is, is he's got he's got two kids and it's it's he's got a lot on his plate it's not yeah. really that's a, yeah. that's a problem it's like how does he he's not necessarily the guy to like run and lead it but he because mm. he just he's got a lot that he's doing but he would be happy to help 
facilitate it, organize yeah. it, be a part of it, and maybe put the right people. But I think that's sort of the problem too. Like you said, in poker, it's like the people, even if you look at some of the guys like Paul Poir, Kerry Katz, um, these guys that are very successful doing a lot for content for poker. They like to play They're you know, they have their own sort of thing. It's like for them to become, if you have guys like that become like the figurehead or do it, it's a, it's like such a commitment. So you're exactly right. Yeah. It's gotta be someone selfless, financially sound that like yeah. takes some time, gets it organized, goes through all the motions. But even then it's like, you know, a lot of these guys like to play too. And they, they're already busy enough. And it's like, exactly. hey, are you just going to ask them to like, give it all up to like, kind of, kind of do that and you maybe have you don't have to but, so yeah. many people jeff think about it right you got like paul Fla, he's got triton right but whoever does this needs to have triton it needs to do party poker live you got to do the ept you got wsop you got to do wpt right. got to yeah. do the heartland poker tour you got to bring all these together yeah. and all the live rooms and if we're talking online i mean think about it some of these online rooms they spend a ton of money on security they got a sharp security system party poker i think is great at their security yeah. Do they want to spend, you know, X amount of money on security and then give all of all of the safe game they've provided to another operator that's maybe seventh or eighth and provide them basically all the resources that they've invested for their game to be the safest? Like that's counter to their economic interests. It just yeah. is. So you got to figure out how to make it make sense for everyone involved to where, hey, we can work together here and let's not compete on this avenue. Yeah, it's also very unique. It's very unique because like in the NBA and the PGA and these there's like one show in town or yeah. like some other distantly different things. Whereas in poker, there's like three, four pillar main brands. But if someone's banned or has get caught doing something there, like in theory, you know, if you get an NBA or whatever, you get you go out some Greek foreign leagues and whatever or not, or you're just banned or there's a, there's like a governing body, right? Like it's like mm -hmm. in poker if you get caught doing something so at one spot, should it carry over to the others? I mean, it's kind of a complicated situation. There's also, which has been touched on, there's sort of laws and rules, right? Like people play online. It's like, can it be disclosed by yeah. them publicly or to the other sites? So now mm -hmm. you kind of have this really, you know, tricky, it's tricky. That's, yep. that's the truth. I think it would have been done, um, you know, before. So uh, it, I know it's been getting thrown around at the top level. Mm -hmm. seriously um yeah it would t and also poker there's a lot of ego and uh you're asking a lot of people to kind of cooperate so uh, we'll see i think it's possible i do think it's possible i just don't know um you know hope, the man. people the people we'd want involved or the people that would be the names kind of get thrown around like they are also a lot of them are business owners parents in that kind of spot of you know, 30s, young 40s, 45, it's tricky, right? Like, yeah, and it's like, wait, who's paying for it? Like, are they are there salaries? Like, for the people that are going to do the thing, is it like, is that their thing now? And they're not doing the other stuff? Or is it like a part-time? So, I don't know. It's 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 interesting. I'm, I think you you summed it up well, and I do think there is a path. But I think I think it's, uh, it's not clear how that would go. So, who knows, Jamie? Maybe that's our calling down the road. Maybe, you know, a few more years, get a few hey. more ducks in a row, and – and we we get involved uh, if 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 uh, I, I mean again I think it's great I think it would be awesome I just don't know um, if we can get like whatever. Bitcoin maybe like three hundred k then count me in bro if Bitcoin three hundred k some of these these projects we're working on if we can get a good hit you know good fifty x <laughs> we're out like then count me in Jeff then I'm All done right. and I'll All I'll right. just be the commissioner. <laughs> you're, you're in for that i love it i love it i love it well listen uh yeah jamie i this has been this has definitely been fun to to catch up and chat and obviously yeah we spent a lot of time and done a lot of projects and we have a lot of stuff in the oven right now going so uh i gotta kind of let everyone know if you don't again poker staples jamie staples check them out youtube twitter twitch snapchat what else uh, my, i mean there's so many different platforms what else would what am i leaving out uh yeah, yeah. Website. This is a Just big one, you know. Twitch, check YouTube, your boy. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter for chit chat. I don't know. Twitter for Twitter for chat. Who knows what's going to be next? But Jamie will be there at the forefront. So uh, I do want to thank Jamie Staples, aka Poker Staples, for his time. This is Coin Rivet episode number twelve. And make sure you give Jamie a follow, especially on Twitch, where he does go live and you can see his whole cards face up and interact. So Jamie, thank you so much. I'm sure. We'll be doing some content and fun stuff very soon. Sounds good, man.